The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the Spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Yeah, I don't... um... We talk about John and uh, Jesus' farewell dialogue here that continues, his his farewell discourse that continues here, um, the sending of the of the Spirit of Truth. But you know, I I do want to I do want to say a word uh, not about uh, not about any particular incident that has happened in the world recently, right? We have um, it's not fair to categorize these things, right? People say we've had two mass shootings recently. Right, and I, I, it's not. I don't think it's. I don't think it's right to categorize these things. And I struggle with the fact. I had to say it. I, I, you could tell I didn't want to say it, but I had to say it um, because I needed to bring uh, to the surface something else. The challenge with saying it is that as soon as I said it, you begin to think about the uh, the narrative that people have told you about it, or about those events. Yeah, I'm, I am unplugged from cable news, except what people throw my way. So I don't have like a, a dominant narrative of what this means and what has to be done about it. But I pray, and I'm Catholic. So in fact, I do have a story. It just doesn't align with any of the stories that are being told in the world. Because God is not trying to use me for some other end, as all those other narratives are trying to do to you. So that, I, have to, I have to say that I have to break it open a little bit, because this is, this is also relevant uh, here in the, in the first reading. St. Paul goes into the Areopagus, and he's talking to the people. He says, you guys have a lot of gods. You guys have a lot of gods, but I've got the real one, Right? You're, you're very religious people, but let's be religious about the right things, yeah? And, he, and here, looking out at the, at the American scene, they say, wow, we have a lot of gods. We have a lot of gods. Chief among them, Mammon. I mean, if you want to give him his historical name, Mammon, right? Prophet and the rest. And uh, can, I, can I tease a little bit and say things like, uh, mental illness, the crisis in mental illness, the way that we treat each other generally from, from the very youngest age all the way through. How do, we treat, how do we treat mental illness, drugs, and what their effect is, and what their quote-unquote side effects are, and how much of that we're willing to tolerate for the sake of turning a profit? Yeah, and what happens when we... Anyway, anyway. I don't want to spin off into it, but this is, this is, this is the workings of one God, yeah? Mammon. <laughs> not one God, capital G, not the one God, but one God. And there, are, and there are others. There are many, many others. And many others that we, that we are, um, I don't know, that, that have their claws in us and that we, we, have, to, we have to fight against. But, here, but here's the challenge, yes. St. Paul says, you, you've got all these gods, yeah? You're religious people. You've got all these gods, but here's the one true God. Okay. Now what I'll say is this. We, we, in our culture, are in very much the same position. We have a lot of gods, but here's Paul, here's Jesus, here's the church proposing the, the one true God. And worship of the one true God, proposing worship of the one true God. So your heart and your life might center on some other God, some counterfeit God. But I am proposing to you the one true God. And what we see in, 
in Jesus, especially here, as he's, he's called us out of the world to be for the world. Now, we are coming out of the world, which means that the culture, we, we're uh, influenced by our culture. We're formed by our culture. So we have hearts that, that are led astray, just like our culture. But he's called us out of the world to have our hearts and our lives center on the one true God. We can't even do it ourselves. He's giving us the spirit. He's giving us the spirit of truth. Truth, true worship. Who is God? What... Um, how does he see his creation? Who am I in respect to him? Right? This is the, these are the truths that the Spirit continually reveals to us and speaks and should be speaking through us. The big things, the big things matter. And the Spirit, in fact, leads us into true worship. We worship in spirit and in truth. It's only through the, the working of the Spirit in us that we're able to worship the true and living God. And, for, and forego and overcome worship of counterfeit gods. Now remember, I don't want to, I mean, do I want to do this? Yeah, I do want to do this. Um, but here, Jesus said just yesterday, this is, this is again, the early verses of, of chapter 16. When, when he comes, the Spirit, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Right, and see that he will judge the world to be in the wrong. And we're looking out and seeing quite clearly that the world is in the wrong. But then what solutions are we grasping for as we thrash about in the water and, and you know, drowning in, this, in the sea of carnage, reaching out to anything that's going to keep us afloat? We have, to, we have to grab onto something greater still. We have to grab onto the true and living God. And we have to live out of his story. This shouldn't surprise us when things are going wrong in the world. He already said it. He already said it. Is this the world that knows Christ Jesus? Is this the, is this the world that has received the Spirit, gives praise to God, uh, seeks to bring his justice to life in the world? It's not. It's not. But, but my friends, where are we? Because we are the people that has been called by God. We are the people to whom he pours out his spirit and into whom he pours out his spirit to lead and guide into all truth. Where are we? Where are we clinging to political ideologies just like everybody else? Absolutely insane. Do we, do we worship? Do our lives center on the true and living God or do they not? And then we have a sense just not simply that, oh, well, the world left to its own devices will, will, will um, run aground but that we have been called to be in those spaces, bringing God's love to life, giving ourselves generously and the like, all the way to, the, to death ourselves in order to bring healing and hope and restoration to God's creation. Where are we? We should be throwing our lives into it. And we're not. We're, we're settling for um, superficial political solutions. Guess what? It's not going to work. It's not going to work because hearts and lives need to be centered on the true and living God in order for us to achieve any sense of peace. But it starts with us. If our lives are not going to be centered on the true and living God, then we're not going to have peace and we're not going to bring peace to the world. So we have to be grounded. I mean, how many, how many of us now, and look, I have some, I'm trying to preach this out of myself this morning. I have, I'm agitated, right? Where am I going to take that? I spent an hour in prayer already today. It helped a little bit, believe it or not. <laughs> just, don't judge by appearances, okay? It helped a little bit. But we, we, have to, we have to pray in it. We have to be affected by what's going on around us. We have, to we have to shoulder the world's burden, the sorrow, pain, lamentation. We have to cry out to God. Yeah, and then, and then we have to find in this, yeah, you know, this being agitated state, I'm going to go and submit myself to God, I'm going to go give myself to God through and within in Christ and the Spirit, that now some of that is being resolved in me, and I'm able to see again clearly what it is I'm meant to do, what it is I've been called to do in the world, namely to be a vehicle of God's charity, to be a vehicle of His, of his healing, of His hope, of His strength, to be able to tell His story, but we have to give ourselves over to it as well. Yeah, 
He has called us. He's called us to that, the task that goes beyond us. He wants, he wants us to be about the renewal of all creation. He doesn't want this garbage to be going on. Clear. Clear. But what is he doing about it? He called you. That's what he's doing about it. And in your little corner of creation today, he breathes his spirit out into you to work through you to bring healing and wholeness and restoration and the rest. To give you peace so that you can be a vehicle for his peace to the entire world.